Hi, this is David Vallee with AltaVista Technology. Today I was going to be showing an example of the new interactive report writer within Sage Intact. This is actually a real world example. This is something involving a uh, use case that one of my customers came to me with. So I thought we would try that here, take a look at this uh, example of this report. So one of my customers came to me and wanted me to make a report that looked something like this, where we would have a list of the customer IDs or a customer name, We'd have the invoice number here, whatever that number might be, have the due date, you know, makes sense. Um, and then maybe have um, a number of days due, so whatever that due, maybe that's uh, due in 10 days or past due or whatever, and then have a dollar amount. So something like this, something like this report. Um, and we could go from there, but this would be the, the core of it. One more thing that they wanted to have was having some uh, columns here to have like due in seven days or due in 14 days and so on. And to have these columns uh, going out over time in weeks really, so that I could uh, with a click of a button, see a report and forecast my cash flow, assuming my customers paid on average on or about their due date, when I could see uh, cash coming in and going out and uh, when I could uh, adjust my uh, cash flow accordingly. So, this is a good report. This sounds like something I want to make. Uh, it gets a little tricky though with a non um, with a standard report writer because I want to do a lot of math on dates. I want to take the due date and amount and do some uh, if then calculations. I could do that really easily with the interactive report writer. So let's give that a go. So here I am inside of a Sage Intact, and I am going to go navigate to the reports area. And I'm going to hit the little plus symbol, say, let's make an interactive custom report. Okay. And it's new. And it tells me that there's a lot of good help topics, which is really wonderful, actually, up in this little help area. There's lots of good things here that you can take a look at. Uh, I'll dismiss that little warning here. And we'll make a name for our report. So it starts off kind of wizardish, but just for a second here. So I'm going to say this is a, a call that uh, AR cash report, something like that. Making a new report, I could take a prior report and spin it off, but I'm making something from brand new. And I got to pick what my uh, core data is going to be coming from. Shoot, it sounds like AR invoices sounds great to me. All right, so I'll pick that. That's it for my little uh, intro into it. And then I just hit create report and it throws me into the report writer. All right. So we have a little writer here. I'm going to do a little uh, prep here. I'm going to make this column a little bigger, just to make it a little easier to see. I'm going to drag that over. And what we have here, what we have is a lot going on here. I have my report areas in the upper left. I have different kinds of views that I could have made. We'll get to all that. Uh, I'll start with um, adding some data here onto my canvas so I can see what I want to do. So my example, I said I wanted to um, put in a customer number, invoice number, and then the dollar amount, and so on. So let's let's uh, find our way through. What I like about this is I can see here I have the invoice detail, and I have attributes, dimensions, and so on. These little folders here where I can click on, and I can see uh, things that are related to the invoices. I don't have to do any kind of joining or linking from table to table. That all happens for me. And what I really like, too, is sometimes I'll look at a heading, AR account title, for example, and I'll be thinking to myself, well, I think I know what that is. I think I know what that means, but maybe I don't. Sometimes, like AR account title and there's account label. Is that the same thing? It can be confusing. What's really nice here is I can hit the little uh, downward chevron here, and it can actually show me a sample of the data. So I can preview it as I'm writing the report, which is super helpful. I like that a lot. Um, and then I could see some... Uh, Dimensions here. We're all about dimensions here in Sage Intact. Classes, contract, customer goes on and on. Uh, measures. These are numbers. So a lot of pre-built things are here for me to to steal from if I want. That looks great. And then I have related objects. And here I can get to things that are related to, in my case, the invoice. So I can see the like AR information, GL account, and on and on. So let's um let's say I'm just going to go to the invoice and let's see what we have here. Um, there's an invoice little folder here. I'm going to scooch this over just to be see it a little better. And if I scroll down, I can see lots of stuff having to do with um, that invoice. How about, let's see here. I'm going to scroll all the way to the top here. And let's see. Uh, if I go under measures here, I can see there's the base amount and so on and so on. Uh, transaction amount looks good. So what I'm going to just do, what I'm going to do is take that uh, transaction amount and I'm just going to double click on that. And 
thinks about it and it adds the information off to the side. That's great. Uh, let's do a little bit more here. I'm gonna scroll down and go down to the invoice itself. And let's see, if I keep going down here, I think if I go far enough, oh, I saw something that I like here. There's a do in off the invoice. That looks really good. I'm gonna take that, double click on that one. And there we go, now I have the do in. Okay, <laughs> we're getting a lot of stuff on our canvas here. Ooh, invoice number, that looks really good. I'm gonna add that too. Really good, a lot of good things are happening here. Now let's scroll up a little bit. I didn't get my customer though, customer name or ID. I could, I could handle either in this example. It's all up to me here. There you go, that's my customer name. All right, so we're getting some information on the report here. Let me organize that a little bit, like that name, I might want to move that over here to the first position. You can see that, okay, let's go a little better. I might see my invoice number, I want to put that over here. And then I can see my due in days, that looks really interesting here, and I got my total amount. This is coming together. I'm seeing my report really quick here. This is great. Um, let's do a few more things to this report if we might. Uh, I wanted to have that column, right? I wanted to have a column that would say, if this is something due in the next seven days or so, then I wanna see it and I could keep adding columns after that. Okay, well, how, how might I do that? Well, there's a whole bunch of little widgets and buttons up here on the top of my uh, little dashboard here. There's a calculation column and so on. Calculation column sounds right to me. I wanna add that, so I click on that button and you get a pop-up. So I could say, I get to build a formula. So in my example, let's say do in seven days is a column that I want to see. That sounds good to me. And it could be the folder title as well as my column title, that sounds great. And I'll scroll down a little bit here and I get build a formula editor here. So I'm going to uh, insert a function. So not so bad, they helped me out a lot here. I kinda wanna do an if here. I wanna say if the do in column is within certain numbers, then show me the dollar amount, otherwise show me a zero. Lots of good formulas here where they help you out with that. But uh, I wanna go into the expressions area and what do I have? I have if, that sounds right. Gives me a little help here. This scrolls down, there's even more information here, but it tells me, um, something that I'm kind of used to seeing. When something is true, then do something else, do something else. Get a little techie here, but stay, stay with me. That sounds all right. So I'll say, yeah, that's the thing I want. Let's say, okay. So case when something is true, let's do something. So the thing I want to do is actually, I want to take that do in column because that was saying when an invoice is due in a certain number of days. Well, that's a column in my report. So if I hit the drop down, I can see it. So there's due in. Oh, great. Let's take that puts in some stuff, it looks a little gibberishy, but that's okay. So I'm gonna say when the due date, okay, let's think about that. So uh, due in seven days here. So maybe I'll say when the due in days is less than or equal to seven, <laughs> then do something. Okay, well, what's the do th something I wanna do here for this expression? I wanna show the dollar amount, let's do that. And the dollar amount is that guy right there. That sounds great. Otherwise, I want to put a zero. Great, that sounds like a formula I would like to use. And I'll say, okay, let's see what it does. Oh, great. I can see it's doing some things here. I can see that, um, let me drag this column around just to, to show and tell a little bit. Move that over here. Uh, I can, here you can see the do in 10 days, it puts a zero. Um, I put a negative seven here, so that looks like it's past due, so that shows there, this eight, no, seven, yeah. So it's doing what I wrote. Now I could tweak that formula. I could add other columns to say do in four, seven to 14, 14 to 21, get really elaborate with my report. This is looking pretty good here. So I'll drag that back. This is looking really good. This is close to the report I want. Now I would keep going in, in the real world example of adding a lot more columns. But let's do a few more things, let's see. Um, one thing I would love is uh, if I had a subtotal here, you can see how I have these uh, uh, customer names. I can see the amounts, but I don't have a subtotal. That would be great. Well, I can click on the uh, name of the customer here and I can create, um, if I go down here, I can under this uh, name here. So I'm on a field called name, that's the customer name. I could show a subtotal after the values. Look at that. Wow, this report's coming together really well. I like that a lot, okay. Now, another nitpicky thing I might like is uh, I see these amounts here. These are dollar amounts. Well, 
you know, I, to me, yeah, that's a dollar amount, but I can't really tell that that's a dollar amount. I don't see, I like commas. I want to see like a good format on that, that I'm used to seeing. So how might I do that? Well, there's a few ways, but um, one good way I like is if you look at the top here, I have a define, refine, and prompts. It gives you a little hint of all the, the horsepower that's under the hood here. I'm going to go back to my define. Just go back to the big picture here and see all the elements that are on this report. And I can see some measures here, the invoice here, and there's that due in uh, seven days. And if I hover over the little down arrow here, uh, I can see uh, a little pop-up menu shows up. So column properties is an option here. That sounds interesting to me. Let's take a look. Wow, a lot here. <laughs> so I'm going to go over to the data format because I know that um, there's a good way to format what I wanted here. So I can hit the override, whatever that format was. So in the database, it's just storing those as numbers. Uh, but I want to say, you know what? That's actually displayed as currency. Do I want a currency symbol? Mm, I don't care about that. I could. I'll leave it off. How do I want my negatives to look? A lot of choices there. My big thing though is I do want to have that that uh, thousand separator. I want to have commas. And sure, let's do the two decimal places. That sounds great to me. So I'll say okay. I just did that on the due in seven days. And I also want to do that over here on my invoice number here. So I want to go back to that. So let's go ahead and go to my column properties. And I'll do the same thing I did just a second ago. So I'm going to override the, the default formatting. Oops, it looks like I picked the wrong column here. Let me back out of that. That's invoice number. My fault. That was telling me uh, some interesting things about that. This was a, a different kind of um, set of options there because I knew that that was text. So actually, I picked this column over here where it says the amount. That's the one I really wanted. Go to column properties. There's my data format. Ah, that looks better. Let's override. Let's show that as uh, two decimal places. Let's remind the world that that's currency. So I could put a symbol if I choose that and put in my thousand separator. That sounds great. Okay, so I just did a couple tweaking. I can go on, obviously, but that looks good. So I go back to my refine area. I have my air cash report, and there's my numbers looking really good. I can see all those, those commas. I have subtotals. Things are coming along great. Um, and just one more thing I'll do, I guess, is see here how it says uh, the name invoice. Well, that's kind of not pretty to me. Name sounds kind of funny, and it's not formatted great for a report that I'm going to be looking at a lot. I would rather that have a better name, maybe if it's a customer name. The label is what I'm objecting to here. I don't like that label so much. So I want to change that. So I'm going to go back to this whole definition area, and I can see where it says name. I'm going to drop down, and I'm going to go back to the column properties. This is the area where I was at just a second ago, and I was changing the uh, the format of the data. I'm going to go back to the column uh, format itself. And you can see right here, custom headings. So I'm going to change this heading here. And I want to say customer number. Also interesting here is, uh, look what it's doing here. It by default will suppress repeated customer numbers going all the way down. I think that works for this report. I'm okay with that. But I might also choose repeat where I do want to list it every individual time. That could be another option that I might do for something differently. But for me, that works great. So I'll say okay there. All right, customer number, love that. I could do some more uh, tweaking here as we go. But now I'm going to switch over to refine. All right. And, oh, that's looking really good. So I like that. So I'm going to hit my save up here. And if I play around, I can move things around, add more things. I can add filters here, um, do lots more uh, good things with this. But you know what? I'm on my way. I like this report a lot. You can see that this is just a glimpse of where I could go with it. And when you take it to the last step, if I switch over here to my dashboard, um, I have a different version over here I was playing with where I actually called it AR Cash Flow and I can put it right in my dashboard. So I can have that there and it's all available for me to view or print or do other uh, manipulations on, kick it to Excel if I want for some reason. All sorts of good things here. So I really like this a lot. I uh, hope this makes sense to everybody and gives you an idea of what's possible with the new Sage Intact Interactive Report Writer. Thanks.